Betsy's doing what? <laughs> Look out, fiber artists, they're coming for us again. Evidently, big tech can't get enough of anything. They even have to pick on little guys like you and me. It seems like Etsy has decided to self-appoint itself the arbiter of truth and justice and the United Way. Uh, now, all of a sudden, you have a crafting site, crafting site, deciding what people can post or create based on their interpretation of what is harmful misinformation or items that can, in, that can obstruct election integrity. When in the world did Etsy become the arbiter of America? Uh, now, I don't know how many of you follow Michelle Malkin. She's actually one of my favorites. Um, she, she, she's about, I think she said she's about four, nine, maybe five foot tall, but she's a spitfire and she knows her stuff. <laughs> she doesn't take any guff, if you will. All right. I'm a poet and I don't even know it. She knows her stuff and she takes no guff. Maybe I should start writing songs, but don't get me distracted. Anyway, I'm going to show you the tweet that she put out for um, her favorite Etsyan, if you will. She's a lady that actually creates um, patterns for knitting. She's got all kinds of neat patterns on there, and I'll show you what they. I'll show you a picture of that in soon in a minute. But this is actually the letter that uh, this lady got from uh, Etsy's Marketplace Integrity Team. It's a little small. I'll read it to you if I can actually see it. This is a message from Etsy's Marketplace Integrity Team. Hello. It doesn't even address her by name. How do we know this isn't spam? We have removed one or more, how ambiguous, how ambiguous is, that, is that, listings from your desktop. Form letter much? Deplorable knitter in accordance with our prohibited items policy. And then they give you a link. We've refunded you the fees. Big favor there. For the listing we removed. Yeah, you better had. <laughs> we can see your deactivated listing here. There's just one. So they said one or more it was just one. Certain types of content are not appropriate for the Etsy marketplace. This includes content that promotes and or endorses harmful misinformation, including items that can obstruct election integrity with another uh, link policy, harmful misinformation. Now, Etsy has done a lot of things, and I've actually been with them since I think it was since 2008. They started in 2005. I went with them because of the fact that they were an alternative from eBay, which was actually uh, turning into a literal fee central. I mean, you 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 would make a dollar, and they would take almost 99 cents of it between them and PayPal together. So they started getting uber bad on the fees, and of course, as an artist, you know, most people would wouldn't auction for most of your stuff. So if they did buy it, it was only a dollar to begin with. So it's like I discovered Etsy after a while. I don't remember who sent me to it. Probably nobody. I found it just being on the internet, looking at different stuff in the art world. Of uh, of course, I wanted to get into that, that business um, because I was making so many different things and I'd come up with the uh, recycle artist idea. Uh, after buying some stuff off of eBay and I was on eBay for a little while for about three or four years before I finally found Etsy 
I went to Etsy because they were inexpensive. It was very easy to put things on there and actually be able to concentrate more on your creating. Because if you, if any of you out there know anything about the crafting business, 80% of it is your advertisements, the way your stuff looks, your packaging, everything other than the actual creations themselves. So you have to be um, ready for something like that. I'll read on. The U.S. election is a major focus for many Etsy buyers and sellers right now, and we understand that members of our community are interested in commemorating this election with items that display the election results. Now that a projected winner of the United States presidential election has been announced, contradictory declarations of victory or content that disputes the validity of the outcome may be considered harmful misinformation and will be removed in order to minimize confusion about the election outcome. Now, I don't know if you watched any of my other videos. I actually had another video just recently that talked about ambiguity in proclamation statements. If you'll notice, this one has two proclamations in it, but only one of them is definite. I'll read it again. Now that the projected winner of the United States presidential election has been announced, actually there's three, it has been announced, contradictory declarations of victory or content that disputes the validity of the outcome may... So they're basing their decision on an ambiguity. It may be considered harmful misinformation. Okay. So these people are actually declaring that it is, but they're saying that it may be. And they're definitely and will, that's a definite doing what they're going to do, be removed in order to minimize confusion about the election outcome. Okay, so Etsy has made it their job now to be uh, arbiter of election integrity and misinformation um, integrity, I guess. <laughs> misinformation, uh, you know, and, or 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 thwarting misinformation. Etsy used to be a crafting site. So now all of a sudden they're, well, I figured this was going to happen the minute that they went public because I could see then, and that's actually when I started looking for alternatives, which I haven't found any decent ones yet. So it says, I'll read on with this letter because I mean, it's one of the most pretentious things I've ever seen from Etsy itself. Cause like I said, I was an Etsy in for quite a long time. I just literally when they started forcing uh, sellers to pay extra, like 15% extra, I believe, or something like that. I don't remember what it was exactly. Uh, when they started asking for 15% extra for advertising budgets that people weren't even asking for, and they want 15% of each sale from what I've been reading. That's outrageous. No, nobody got to vote on that. Nobody asked for that. And basically, if you don't like it, you can leave. Well, guess what? <laughs> anyway, even if it isn't a seller's intention to encourage or condone harmful misinformation, which now they're actually consider now they've actually done this on the basis of what someone's intention was. How in the world uh, they've again, just like the mainstream media and everything else, they have now become mind readers and soothsayers, or tellers of the future, if you will. Etsy reserves the right to remove items that we determine aren't in the spirit of our marketplace or otherwise violate our policies. Duh. Obviously. <laughs> Please be aware that continuing to list prohibited content may, here we are with the ambiguity again, lead to the suspension of your account. We don't want that to happen, so we ask that you please review the rest of your items and ensure that they comply with our prohibited items policy. I can remember when it used to just be guns and uh, certain body parts, human body parts, things like that. Now it's a cap. Let me see if I can find it here. And actually, it's not even a cap. It's the 
pattern so that someone else can make the cap. In fact, uh, Michelle Malkin writes, Thread, Trump derangement syndrome strikes crafters again. My friend deplorable knitter told her stop the steel hats have been banned on Etsy. Now, I've never had anything banned. I actually had a copyright strike, if you will, from someone like I'm supposed, like anybody's supposed to know that fairy dust was copyrighted. And the weirdest part about it was, is it was just some small person I couldn't even find any kind of information on. It wasn't even like Disney or something. I mean, who would you think has the market on fairy dust of all things? Anyway, Michelle actually has been covering this kind of stuff for a while. Anti-Trump crafters a decade long unraveling. Uh, she wrote about this back in June 26, 2019. And actually, this particular this particular subject came across my feed uh, through YouTube for one, from one of my favorite walkaway celebrities, I guess you could call her. She's almost a, she looks like a celebrity to me. She seems like it. She's getting an awful lot of attention for the walkaway movement as far as that goes. Dr. Carlin. Boroshenko, I believe I pronounced that. I hope I pronounced that right. She brought it to my attention. Actually, one of the reasons why that I uh, uh, related to her in the first place is because I I do appreciate and like fiber art. I'm a I like to crochet. I don't sell it or any of that stuff. That's actually my pleasure craft, if you will. <laughs> I like to actually make my own clothing if I can. Pieces of uh, accessories, etc., and etc. I've made actually my favorite thing usually to make is fang fingerless gloves. I used to wear them on stage all the time. So anyway, it seems like as if one of the reasons why my friend, or should I say my, uh, well, one of, the, one of the people that I I like to follow, one of my favorite uh, walk awayers. Uh, do, what do they call themselves? <laughs> Walkers away, yeah, there we go. Some one of the few walkers away. I do appreciate and a lot of their stories and everything like that. Uh, but she brought this to my attention, and one of the re reasons why I relate with her so well is because she's also a fiber artist. Uh, something again, it's something that's very relaxing and especially uh, rewarding if you can actually make something that you can can either use, wear, or gift. So, uh, copyright 2019. Again, Michelle Malkin, she's another one of my favorite pundits, if you will. She's all about the Second Amendment and free speech. Fun fact, I've been crocheting since I was 10. So, another reason why I can relate with uh, my friend, Michelle Malkin. She feels like a friend. A lot of these people I watch so much, they're in my home every day. They feel like friends. They do. Uh, my Tita Lisa taught me the magic of granny squares. Fellow yarn nerds will understand the heavenly bliss of spending hours at Hobby Lobby or Walmart, immersed in a sea of alpaca, mohair, angora, super bulky, and super saver skeins for blankets, baby clothes, hats, headbands, scarves, bookmarks, and potholders. Yes, I've made them all. I haven't done any baby clothes. I've done a few ba I've done a few blankets. I love headbands. Uh, I do scarves. Uh, the rest of it, I usually try to come up with something else. I've actually made handbags and things like that too. So, I passed on the tradition to my artsy teenage daughter. Teaming up on a Christmas Afghan for my dad last year was one of my favorite ever projects. Are you surprised? You shouldn't be. Creativity and crafting transcend political ideology, or so one might think. This week, Ravelry.com, one of the internet's most popular gathering sites for crocheters and knitters with a reported 8.5 million users. I didn't realize I was in such huge company. Publicly smeared and ejected conservative members who support President Donald Trump. Why would they do this? Why would anybody cut off half of their revenue? Because you know these websites run just like the TV sites uh, on advertisements. And of course, also too, a lot of them I do believe have uh, paid memberships as well. So why would, why, why? No matter who they want to talk about, no matter who they want to 
believe in, vote for, whatever like that. Why? Why would you... Why would you turn down their money? Why would you turn down their money? You're literally alienating half of your business. I mean, are you that rich now that you can just you you can just aff afford to pick and choose who to take money from or who to who to who to sell your services to? I mean, ha have you gotten that rich? Have you gotten that better than anybody? So, I'll read on. They claim we are banning support of Donald Trump and his administration on Ravelry. This includes support in the forms of forums, posts, projects, patterns, profiles, and all other content. The progressive operators at Ravelry de declare that every right winger on the Fiber Arts Forum who supports our commander in chief is really just a KKK domestic terrorist wielding sharp needles instead of flaming crosses and nooses. It doesn't matter whether you support the White House because you're a pro-borders, pro-life, pro-entrepreneur, pro-limited government, anti-collectivist, and anti-socialist. Again, people that have literally... It's like they're trying to be mind readers, soothsayers, fortune tellers. Like, they just, they, they've met everybody and they know everybody. I'm, I'm, I, I, I have to be honest here. I don't understand how people have gotten so trusting of what other people say about other people. I have never, ever based a friendship or a relationship or even a business partnership of any kind based on what someone else told me about that person it's like yeah you treat me one way put it this way the way you treat me is how I'm going to act accordingly that's probably just about like anybody else I've met on this planet so you know they never tell you what they did to that person they only tell you that person is terrible and then oh, da da I don't, I guess the reason why I always base my opinions in that aspect on whether or not I've met the person who I, you know, it's like, yeah, obviously when somebody comes to me with something bad about somebody else, it's like, well, yeah, obviously they had a fight or falling out, you know, because you don't just talk about a person like that unless you think that they've wronged you or unless you just want to get them in trouble and you're just a shit stirrer. But <laughs> again, don't get me distracted. I'll finish reading this if you can stand it. We cannot provide a space that is inclusive of all and also allow support for open white supremacy. Ravelry management declared. Hmm. You know, I was on Ravelry for a while. I don't remember any of this hoo-ha going on. Of course, again, music was always my focus, so a lot of this... Uh, I don't pay that much of attention. I wasn't paying that much of attention to any media, much less mainstream media. So this is new to me, I guess you could say. First of all, you can't provide a, you cannot provide a space that is inclusive of all and also allow support for open white supremacy. So that's not all, is it? And who has decided who is a manner of white supremacy? In case you weren't clear on Ravelry equating all Trump support with virulent racism, the defamers decried, support of the Trump administration is undeniably support for white supremacy. Okay, so who are these people? What are they in charge of? And why did they get to, dis why do they get to declare this? You know? I was going to say, nothing ambiguous about what they're saying here. So, Michelle Malkin goes on to say, So watch out, America. Knitted MAGA beanies are the new MAGA baseball caps of hate. Trump 2020 tea cozies are the new white hoods. Red, white, and blue twisted cable ear warmers are subversive tools of racist oppression. Give me a break. 
I swear to God, these people that are coming up with this literally don't seem to have enough brains to blow themselves up with. I mean, first of all, how dare they? How, how, how hubris of it, of these people is it of them to just assume that everybody's all white supremacists and everything? I'm thinking to myself, and I was going to say, you know, um, a lot of these people that come out with all of this stuff, does anybody notice what their colors are? I mean, I don't hear or see a lot of people of color, if you will. I absolutely hate that term. In fact, switch it around and it would actually be offensive. Or it was in the 70s anyway. But can I, I, I non-white people, I, I, how do you do this? They're just people to me. So anyway, like I say, I've noticed that the most people, the people that are actually screaming the word that rhymes with podiatrist the most, are they themselves the ones that they're screaming about? Or they look like the ones that they're screaming about. So, you know, how are you supposed to take this stuff? Well, I have an, I have a simple solution. Ignore them. Nobody needs these people. If they want to be exclusive in that aspect, go make your own sites. In fact, I found a lot nicer, a lot better, a lot um, more generous people on some of the groups, uh, the crochet groups on Facebook. And the best part about a lot of these are, I've actually gone to several of them. Some of them don't get uh, monitored well enough and they start getting the spam and all that. In, but, but they end up losing everybody and they go, they keep going on and creating better ones and better ones, and better ones. And the ones that I appreciate are the ones that are monitored properly and don't mess with the spam and don't get, you know, they, 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 they don't have people uh, saying, oh, you won, click on my site. And then your whole computer goes down. Um, are people actually still falling for that mess? Obviously they are, otherwise they wouldn't be attacking some of these, um, uh, some of these comment sections. <laughs> anyway, this is about it for this video. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> it just, <sighs> nothing is sacred anymore. Uh, if you want to do crafting, I guess you're going to have to start doing that in private as well. Um, you know, creativity, isn't that part of cre isn't that part of uh, freedom of speech? And for Etsy to literally have joined the social media ilk, if you will, I, it just, <laughs> they're supposed to be a crafting site, but they basically have gone full circle in a matter of less than 15 years. Which is unfortunate. They were an awesome site when they first started out. And the crafting world was better off for them. Now, it's just another... Amazon. Wannabe. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. If you'd like to support my work and you'd like to see some more videos, the more money I make, the more videos I can make. I'm usually only on Saturdays, but I'd like to go at least two to three days a week if I can. I made a video last time, if you'll look at it, I will actually put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the uh, archive right here uh, so that you can go to it. It will explain to you how you can receive an original goddess creation. I am going out of business. I have gone out of business as far as Etsy is concerned. I'm trying to liquidate, I guess you could say, the rest of my inventory. I, over the 10, 15 years that I have been doing this, I actually have created quite a bit of things and uh, going through the house, uh, I'm finding more and more. So uh, it explains to you how, how the donations will work and what you'll get or an example of what you'll get if you donate to my channel. That way you can support my channel and you get more back than just my big mouth. Please also too, I would appreciate a like, a subscription, 
send me a comment. And if please, the best thing you can do is share this video. Share this video, share my videos, especially share the uh, I Come Bringing Gifts video because that is actually a way that I am also trying to support my channel so that I can include you in my conversations. Thank you for joining me on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time. Thank <music> you.